Here are the percentage of people who thought they could win a game against a professional tennis player. 71% overall, more than 80% of the younger players, and nearly half of players over the age of 55 were like, yeah, I can get a game off Joker. <laughs> okay, uh, Radic, I'm going to start with you on this one. I, I know you tweeted something about it. <laughs> Those 55-year-olds, you know, getting gully out there. Just, what are your thoughts, Andy? This is insane. If I had as much self-confidence in my tennis game as these people who were surveyed do, I would have won Wimbledon 17 times, minimum. <laughs> This is absolutely insane. There is no chance. I played the Ohio University intramural champion back in like 05 or 06 because a guy was writing a book about, you know, what would be needed to compete with a pro. I beat him with a frying pan, Steve, a frying pan. <laughs> and I'm, it's not like I'm the most talented guy. To, there it is right there. I was playing, I played him with a frying pan. <laughs> he like, was proud about so, it too. So, there, there is just this is this is insanity on like the highest level. If you play at your club and you, you didn't play Division One tennis, you cannot win a game off of Novak Djokovic. Stop it! I'm sitting here as a 40 year old. I won 32 times on tour. I cannot win a game off of Novak Djokovic right now in this moment, and you can't either. If I can, this is insane. I have had many conversations with friends and family about uh, pro sports that if we got paid to get trained, then we too could become pro athletes. And we say this as we're sitting on the couch eating potato chips. And yet we still go, I could do that, hold my beer. Well, I'm really excited. I got something cool to show you today. I did a little experiment with the video knowledge that I have. And I'm going to show you just a little difference between a pro player and an amateur player using Adobe Premiere. For my case study, I decided to choose Dan Evans as my example. Why? Well, he's roughly around the same weight and height as myself. He's also currently ranked 21 at the time of recording this video. I found some footage of Evans playing where he makes a handful of shots back to back. Uh, forehand, forehand, inside out forehand, cross court forehand, backhand, and another backhand. So what I did, I set up the ball machine to feed in the same area of the court and recorded myself hitting at a normal pace, and then me trying to kill the ball while trying to keep it in the court at the same time. which proved to be more difficult than I thought it was because of my level of skill. What I want to illustrate is how much time you have to react from the contact of the ball on the racket to the contact of the ball on the court on the other side. Basically, reaction time. Originally, my plan was to add a effect called timecode to my footage in Premiere. And with that, I was going to cut the endpoints of the contact with the ball to the contact of the ball on the other side of the court. So for example, I'm just gonna go to the frame where I make contact with the ball, which is about right there. And I'm gonna cut that, and then I'm gonna, where it makes contact on the other side, and what I do sometimes is zoom into that to really see where that ball is landing. Oh hit that right on the line, something like that. Anyway, there's where it makes contact. Here are both the clips of Dan and I playing back to back with our reaction times overhead. What a point. Oh, quality. Overall, Dan Evans' average shot 
is faster and harder than my basic shots. And I know for some of you this may look like it's splitting hairs, but in reaction time for tennis, this does make a big difference. So here's a clip again of me hitting the same uh, shots, but this time I'm trying to kill the ball and keep it in the court at the same time. So in this clip, I'm definitely closer to those same numbers, but I tried to get this for almost an hour, and it took me like 15, 16 tries to get all those shots in. And I had no crowd, no pressure, and no opponent. And yet, it still took me several tries to get it, and to make those shots consistently when Dan Evans made them look easy. Even though he and I are about the same weight and the same height, and like, I'm I'm fit, I, I work out. My maximum hitting power, which is not accurate, doesn't even come close to Dan Evans' pro hitting power and accuracy. Especially when you start to factor in uh, top spin, angles, form and technique, experience, strategies, court surfaces, Everything else that makes up the game of tennis, the gap begins to get wider and wider. Now, imagine a player who is over six feet tall and weighs about 200 pounds, and they want to absolutely just kill the ball. Okay, take Fernando Gonzalez for an example. He is behind the baseline at contact point and he hits the ball near slash middle of the baseline on the other side. And the court length from end to end is 78 feet long. And he hit it in about half a second. That's absolutely insane. But wait, let's take it a step further. If we take the reaction time for this guy who's on the left side of court here to react to the ball by the time it gets over the net. So this, this is something I notice in amateur players like myself is that on average, we react to the ball when it starts getting close to the net or it crosses the net. If we take that and apply it to this shot here, Fernando absolutely just cracks that ball, and here it is at the net. We take that clip, we're at eight frames. So if we go to the calculator here, plug in eight, 0.27. You know, do you know how fast that is in the game of tennis? You have to decide in that time of where you want to be, where you think the ball is going to be. Like in, you have to anticipate the shots sometimes. This guy here has to react and you can even see his body movement here. He starts reacting. So he, he starts leaning to the right, right when the ball is at the net. So he sees it coming, He's, he starts going that way, but then the ball just moves so much faster, he can't he can't even go for it. There's still several feet there he has to cover in that time. To me, that's absolutely crazy that some of these pros can react that fast to shots in general, but also their shots are just faster and harder than an amateur player. I am planning to do more experiments like this when it comes to tennis and video. If there's anything you guys would like to see, let me know in the comments. Personally, I'm really excited about these findings. Uh, not just for myself, but for anyone else that's trying to figure out their average speed with playing their own tennis. Part of me is also like, what if there's already a app or software out there that does basically what I'm doing? If you guys know of anything like that, please let me know. It might make my life a whole lot easier. Anyway, that's all I got. 
Thanks for watching. In the meantime, I'm going to go practice some tennis.